Cards are a lot like people in the sense that they should never be taken at face value. When shopping for a car, we can easily be swayed by its looks or all the features it has to offer. The flip side of that coin is when we're quick to dismiss a car simply because of its price or lack of features. But more often than not, it's what lies beneath the surface that really counts. And to prove my point, we take a closer look at the Hyundai Accent. Accent is Hyundai's entry into the subcompact car segment, a segment which typically caters to first-time car buyers or the younger demographic. So cars in this segment have to be affordable or feature-packed. But the Accent is neither one of those. Because this isn't exactly the most affordable car in its class, and judging by the exterior, the absence of alloy wheels and uh, fog lamps also tells you it isn't feature-packed either. So what exactly is this car's value proposition? Well, let's start with the fact that Hyundai is the only car manufacturer with their own integrated steelworks, and that gives their cars a crucial advantage when it comes to body structure. All the critical areas of this car are reinforced with ultra-high strength steel, which gives it an edge when it comes to safety, particularly cabin protection. In terms of styling, this fifth generation accent is a bit more subdued and refined compared to the previous generation. Its conservative styling is actually a departure from the usual funky designs you see in this class. And despite the fact you don't get niceties such as alloy wheels, LED headlamps, DRLs, or even fog lamps, the exterior of the Accent still manages to look quite upscale because of its simplistic styling. The rear end of the Accent with its sleek taillights is actually my favorite part of the exterior. It actually doesn't look like a subcompact sedan from here. Opening the trunk reveals 388 liters of cargo space, which is average for the class. Unfortunately, the rear seats don't fold down, so if you need more space, in the same way a tall 12-year-old sitting on a car seat may need more headroom, you might just have to get a bigger vehicle. I hope you know I'm kidding, right? Oh. I think the fact this doesn't have keyless entry will make our friends at Banawe extremely happy. But kidding aside, this is a no-frills interior. Now, it may not give you everything you want, but it definitely has you covered with everything you need. The upside there is that everything is extremely easy to operate and very intuitive. In fact, I think you'll only need to reference the owner's manual if you're from the Stone Age. As expected, the materials used here are mostly made of hard plastic. But there seems to be no compromise in terms of comfort or ergonomics. Even the radio is pretty basic. You don't even get Bluetooth connectivity, but you do have a USB port and an aux input. And if you're the type who likes to upgrade or modify your car, then this will serve as a great platform. The instrument cluster is also very straightforward. In fact, I think this is a back-to-basics approach on car interiors. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I know there are fancier interiors out there, even in this segment. But the good thing about this interior is that everything still feels well built and put together. Quality was not compromised. And I know that may seem like a basic expectation, but trust me when I say there are new cars out there that still feel like they're gonna fall apart. At the back, it's a similar story. Don't get much in terms of amenities, not even an armrest but you do sit comfortably with a decent amount of space, which is really a highlight because the leg and headroom back there is comparable to cars above its class. So at this point, what we have here is a spacious car with basic amenities and a good body structure. Now that may not be compelling enough to get you to buy one of these. So I think it's time to get this out on the road and see what's what. One of the 
highlights, which I already mentioned earlier, is how much high strength steel was used here. In fact, I think 50% of this car's structure is made of high strength steel. And this has 13% more high strength steel than the previous model. And I know that it goes without saying that a stiffer body structure would keep the occupants safer during the, a collision. But the reason I keep emphasizing it is it also has numerous benefits as it translates to the drivability and ride quality of the car. Because the added rigidity also helps in terms of handling, it also makes the cabin a lot quieter, and it also provides a smoother ride. Now, like most subcompact sedans, this has a torsion beam suspension at the back, as opposed to a multi-link suspension. But this one has been tuned more for comfort than anything else. So the ride quality is actually really, really good. But going around corners at speed, there is a bit of flexing, but you can still feel the car grip as you take on corners. And it's still somewhat confidence inspiring. Now what surprised me about this is just how well sorted the steering is. It's very light, but the ratio is actually pretty quick. And dare I say, you can actually do some spirited driving in this thing. This is actually fun to drive because the car responds quite abruptly to the slightest steering inputs, which I really like. It really makes you feel as one with the car. And that's not something you'd expect from a subcompact. Okay, so the steering is well sorted, but what about power delivery? Well, under the hood, you get a 1.4 liter gasoline engine, and it pumps out 99 horsepower and 132 newton meters of torque. And I know those numbers aren't astronomical, but the car does not feel heavy. It does not feel like a slouch. And I'm gonna gun it here. And it actually works really well with the transmission, and it takes it all the way up to the red line based on your throttle inputs. Now this car isn't insanely fast, but it is definitely well tuned because it does everything you want it to. And in a subcompact, that's really all you could ask for. Now the transmission in this thing is a six speed conventional automatic transmission. And I'm so glad it's not a CVT. And it does a really good job in shifting. You don't feel the shifts. And it's just sensitive enough to respond to your throttle inputs. It knows when to downshift, it knows when to upshift. It, it communicates really well with all the driver's inputs, which again is a very pleasant surprise. So this car may be a little down on features. But considering how well this thing drives, I'd say that's a fair trade-off. So most people in the market for a subcompact car will merely want something that's convenient and easy to use. Something that's easy to drive. Something that won't stress you out if you use it on a daily basis. And this definitely ticks those boxes. With the bonus of delivering excellent drivability. Because it's not just easy to drive. It's also quite fun. So the highlight here is not just the body structure. It's also the drivability. A Hyundai Accent with a 1.4 liter engine and a six-speed automatic transmission and airbags will cost you 890,000 pesos. And I know there are cars in this segment that'll offer you features like an infotainment system, LED headlights, fog lamps, alloy wheels, and leather seats. But those cars would usually cost above a million pesos. And the point I'm trying to make here is that those are all accessories that you can get by taking a trip to Banawe. But getting a car with a good body structure, good build quality, and the safety to boot is something you really can't get after you roll out the dealership. And that's exactly what the Hyundai Accent offers.